So we've slaved away at this and we finally have it. This is our P55 Core i5 slash Core i7 overclocking guide. So basically I want to kick this off with one of the coolest features I think I've ever seen on a motherboard. And we've got the MSI P55 GD80 here. And we actually have touch sensitive power reset and green power buttons. I thought that was pretty freaking sweet. So we're going to show you over the next few minutes how to get the most out of your P55 Core i5 Core i7 platform. So for the sake of explaining a little bit what this new platform means, we've got essentially what is an LGA 1156 socket. So that's separate from the older uh, 1366 socket. So what that means is this is a more mainstream platform. Instead of having support for triple channel DDR3, we have support for dual channel DDR3. Instead of support for two graphics cards, an SLI or Crossfire, at 16x and 16x electrical bandwidth, we've actually only got support for 8x 8x and then another 4x off the chipset so that's not ideal for graphics card use now when i say off the chipset it used to be that all pci express was off the chipset but now these 16 lanes which we can split into 8x 8x are actually coming off the new core i5 cpu and i shouldn't say just core i5 because there are core i7 branded cpus for this platform but the difference is that instead of being four cores and four hyper threaded threads a Core i5 is only just four cores. It doesn't support hyperthreading. So any Core i7, whether it's for 1366 or 1156, is going to support hyperthreading, and a Core i5 will not. So let's talk a little bit about the design decisions we made in our Core i5 overclocking platform. We first of all started with the MSI P55 GD80, and there are a couple reasons that we chose their premium P55 board over the other competition. Now, first of all, it looks pretty freaking sweet. No, I'm just kidding. That's not, that's not why we picked it. Actually, we picked it for a lot of the features that it has that are related to overclocking. So we've got their Brain Dead Easy OC Genie button, which is just like magic one button overclocking. Then we have our base clock up and down buttons. Then we've got a really beefy power delivery system, including uh, really good cooling for that. And last but not least, you can actually read voltages for your CPU, your RAM, other key system components right off the board itself using a multimeter instead of relying on software for that. Now, other stuff that's really important for overclocking is going to be your cooling. So for that we've chosen a Corsair Asetek um, uh, LCLC liquid cooling solution. And then for your power delivery we've chosen a Corsair HX 1000 watt power supply. Really important to get nice clean power when you're running things beyond specification. So let's dive right into the BIOS features of this motherboard. So we've navigated over to the cell menu. That's where you're going to do most of your overclocking, but maybe we should cover the basics first. So we've got our overclocking profiles here. That's where you can save your, uh, your intermediate results. You can save up to six profiles with different settings. And then you've got M flash. So that's how you can flash your BIOS to the latest version you download from the manufacturer, in this case, MSI's website. And then the cell menu. So this is where the real stuff goes on. So first of all, let's go down and we'll go through the basics of how to set up to even start overclocking. So we're going to disable speed step. We don't need that. EIST is gone. C1E, so that's a power savings feature. We're going to turn that off for the sake of overclocking. The OC Genie button operation, we're actually going to turn that off for manual overclocking. The base clock button is fine. Memory Z, uh, it's fine to leave the timings in auto mode I've found for this board. However, you are going to want to adjust the memory ratio to something that will stay within spec. So we're gonna go with a memory ratio of uh, four. Okay, QPI ratio, you wanna turn that down to the lowest available setting. So in this case, 16. Clock gen tuner is uh, not something that we need to play around with right now. Load line calibration can stay on, uh, but I prefer to turn it off because Intel specs it that way for a reason. We're overriding an Intel spec doing that. Now, for a quick and dirty overclock, we're going to go to kind of our maximum comfortable CPU core voltage. So we're using water cooling, so 1.4 volts should be more than safe. And then because we're actually using four sticks of RAM, you're definitely going to want to turn up your VTT. So that's the uncore of the CPU. So something around 1.3 volts should be fairly safe. Now you never want to go above 1.65 volts for your DDR3 on uh, a Nehalem based CPU. So that's what we're going to go with. And then you should always turn your spread, spread spectrums off for overclocking. So we're going to press F10, save these settings, and then we'll go back in and start tuning them a little bit more. 
Okay, so now we're going to do the actual part of the tuning that is where we turn up the speed of the processor, uh, overclocking it. So you can see our CPU base frequency or base clock is at 133 by default, so we're just going to dial it into 185. We're going to turn our CPU multiplier down to 20, so that gives us a target CPU frequency of 3.7 gigahertz. Now, I actually had my RAM multiplier or ratio a little bit high. You can see that if we leave it where I had it before, we're at um, 1.85 gigahertz on the RAM. When you're running four DIMMs, it's better to err on the side of caution. So we're going to turn it down to a 4x ratio, and that's 1480 megahertz, so that's a little bit more comfortable, especially when you're loading up with lots of RAM. So we're just going to wait for this to reboot and we'll uh, come back to it when we're in Windows. So you can see behind me three of the most important tools that I'll use in any overclocking endeavor that I might embark upon. So first of all, we have CPU-Z. That tells us the basic information about our CPU, including the frequency it's running at and how it's derived. Then above that, I have Core Temp, which tells us the temperature that our CPU is running at and helps us keep a close eye on whether it's getting too hot or if we've got any thermal throttling going on, anything like that. And then on the right, I have Prime95, where I'm running eight instances of highly stressful code on the CPU that does uh, an error check. So if the CPU makes a rounding error and Prime95 detects it, it'll turn red and show that it failed. So if it fails, it's not stable, we restart. Generally speaking, you want to run about eight hours of Prime before you can call any setting stable. So there's actually a ton of work that goes into making slight base clock adjustments, slight voltage adjustments, until you've found just the right balance of temperatures, uh, voltages, because too much voltage means less longevity for your CPU, and also stability. Hi, it's Linus from OC Now. You'll be saying, wow, every time you press this button. No, but seriously, the OC Genie button is kind of a cool little feature. Um, basically, you set all of your BIOS settings to the complete bone stock defaults, and then you boot up your system, and let's see how far the OC Genie can take our CPU without any effort at all. So if you look over my shoulder here, you can see that OC Genie has dialed our CPU right up to 3.53 gigahertz, which is uh, pretty good actually for an automated hardware level overclocking solution. Now we can actually take it further than that using just the buttons on the board. So you can see I'm pressing the base clock button now and the CPU frequency is going up, up, up. So cameraman, come have a look at this button because it's a pretty sweet little feature. We were actually able to take our CPU with complete stability up around 3.7 gigahertz just using the base clock buttons. Now one limitation we did notice about OC Genie is that it does perform best when you're only using two sticks of RAM. Maybe they'll tune it a little bit more later but we did find it was most impressive when we operated it that way. If you're going to use four sticks, you're probably going to want to tune it manually. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to our Core i5 overclocking guide and thank you for watching NCIX Tech Tips.